Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to install Synology's DSM virtually. So it's important to ensure that your NAS is capable of running Virtual Machine Manager because that's the only way you'll actually be able to run this. So I navigated to Synology's site and you can see here that these are the, uh, the NAS devices that are capable of running Virtual Machine Manager. But I also have written instructions that will guide you through this entire process. And I have a link in those written instructions that will point you directly to Synology's website so that you can ensure that you're able to do this. So a lot of people may or may not know that you can actually run Synology's DSM virtually on a Synology NAS. So there's a bunch of different reasons why you might want to do something like that. And a little later in the video, I'll explain some of those reasons. But for now, just know that Synology gives you one free DSM license, a virtual DSM license, uh, with the purchase of your NAS. You're able to run multiple, but you have to purchase additional licenses. So generally, you'll probably only run one. This is probably not something that everybody's going to want to do, uh, but you can watch along and you can see if it's something that you want to implement yourself. And at the end of the video, see some of the reasons why you might want to implement this. So to get started, we need to install Synology's Virtual Machine Manager. So head over to the Package Center, search for the Virtual Machine Manager, and install it. After it's done installing, you will get a pop-up for the firewall ports that need to be opened if you have firewall notifications enabled. If you don't, I have the ports in the written instructions that you'll have to open, and you'll have to do that through Synology's firewall. After that's done, you can proceed, and it's going to ask you to check the host settings. Generally, you're just going to leave all of this as default and you can move on. If you have to change anything here, you probably have a good reason to. So this will depend on your personal setup, but for the majority of people, you can leave this as default. After that, you'll have to pick the volume that you want your virtual machines to be installed on. So it's important to note that you won't be able to get to these virtual machine files from the GUI. If you need to access them individually, which you probably shouldn't, but if you had to, you'll have to SSH in. After that, Virtual Machine Manager is now installed. So it's going to launch, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to the Image section, select DSM Image, and then at that pop-up, you're going to have to select Download Virtual DSM Image. And then it's going to pop up another box, and you're going to have to select OK. This is just saying that it's going to download the latest DSM version. Once that's done, you can confirm that everything looks good, and you can select Next. It's now going to ask you to pick the storage that you'd like to use, so select that and then click Apply. And at the next step, you're going to have to wait until the status reports as healthy. As soon as it does, you'll be able to go to the Virtual Machine section and you'll be able to create a new virtual machine. So from there, you can select Synology's Virtual DSM. And then after that, you're going to have to select the storage. Now this is the storage on your host device. And then it's going to ask you to give it a name. You're going to have to select the CPUs and the memory. So these settings are going to be depending on your NAS itself. Some people have more memory because they installed more memory, and some people have different processors. So select what you'd like. For me, I'm just going to pick one CPU and two gigs of memory, and then I'm going to proceed on to the next step, which is just going to have me specify how much storage I want for this specific virtual machine. So some people, it's going to be a couple hundred gigabytes. Some people, it's going to be a couple terabytes. It's really depending on how much you want. The next section is going to ask you to specify a network, and for the majority of people, default is fine. Uh, if you have to change this or if you want to change this for whatever reason, you're free to do so here. You can now specify if you want this to automatically start. So what that means is automatically start when your NAS is booted up. So you can change that here, and then it's going to move on and it's going to ask you to specify what local users you want to be able to access this virtual machine. So select those users check the box that says power on the virtual machine after creation and select apply. This is now going to attempt to power on that virtual machine, but we first have to install that DSM license, that VDSM license that we talked about a little earlier. So if you're using that free license that you're automatically given with your NAS, click use existing license, and then you're going to select the free license. And after you apply this, your virtual machine is going to power on. Now this process is going to take probably about 5 or 10 minutes, so you got to be patient. But as soon as you have an IP address in the general section, you'll be able to navigate to this virtual DSM instance. So navigate to the IP address that it was assigned, and just like regular DSM, you'll have to use ports 5000 or 5001. As soon as you get there, you're going to give it a server name, you can specify your username and password, and then when you move on from that, you're going to actually be brought straight into DSM. So this is now running virtually on your NAS, 
and it's totally isolated, which is great because that's what you want. So at this point, you have all the benefits of virtual machines. You can take a snapshot, play around with it, break everything if you want, restore from that snapshot. You're free to do whatever you want at this point. So I'm going to quickly give a few reasons why someone would want to install DSM virtually. And like I said a little earlier, this is really not going to be something that everybody wants to implement. You're free to do it, but it's not going to be something that everybody actually uses. And the reason for that is because DSM is set up to be as simple as it possibly can be to actually accomplish things. Meaning that if you have to create a storage pool or you want to accomplish a specific task, you're purchasing the operating system. Synology's uh, NAS devices are not powerful by default. The majority of them use four or five year old processors. So you're not buying the hardware, you're really buying the software. And with that software comes ease of use. And that's why I'm saying that it's not necessarily mandatory for people to set this up because you don't necessarily need a test server. You can find a few tutorials online. You can kind of do everything that you need to do outside of this. But if you're a tinkerer, if you're somebody who wants to test things out, this is a great place to do it. So the number one reason is definitely test server. You are free to break this. You can do almost anything that you want on here. Note that not all settings are available, but within reason, you can do anything that you want. And if you break it, it doesn't matter because it's a virtual machine. You're not actually impacting your host NAS device, which is great. Um, that's probably the biggest reason to implement something like this. Another reason is that Synology only allows you to specify your NAS as a VPN client or a VPN server. So you can't run both. So if you have a need where you have your NAS and you want that to be the VPN server, for example, you will need to specify a second device to be a VPN client. In this case, you can use Virtual DSM to be that VPN client. So if you need to connect somewhere else, you're free to do it on that virtual DSM instance and your host NAS device would then be your VPN server. This is kind of how you can accomplish both at the same time. They are technically different instances, but at least you're able to do both. And the final reason that I want to go over ties pretty much directly to the first reason. But if you're interested in testing out new DSM versions, so DSM 7.0 is coming for example, this is probably the only place that you should be testing it. So you don't want to actually install that software on your NAS itself because it can break things. A lot of the applications are not updated for that new version. So this is the place that you should do it. You can install it virtually. You can test everything out the way that you want to. You can provide feedback to Synology. And then if it breaks anything, it doesn't really matter because it's running virtually. Um, so that's another reason why it kind of ties into the first one. But that's another reason why you might want to implement something like this. So that wraps up the tutorial for today. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, guys.